Hello. Then. Find a. Hey, there we go. Here we have. We're on camera. And welcome back to another Back Friday. Uh, today is Friday, so we're doing background. Um, you guys have sent me a lot of great emails, great uh, suggestions, and great responses to some feedback rounds. And I've selected a couple ones, this round here. And if you still want to for um, portfolio or work reviewed by me, uh, to get some feedback, you can actually use the link below. There's a email, well, in the caption below. Exactly. And then we'll pick it up, um, pick out a different ones from this email. So we're not, uh, we're looking at the type of work, we're looking at how it fit for the channel and I'm really excited. We've got a couple of really great ones. So let's jump into it. So I'm just gonna start up here. I've had out. And first up, we have Boom. So first up we have in uh, sorry if I pronounced that name wrong. There's a, a really beautiful lettering piece, and I love these illustrations how full it is, how balanced it is, uh, the color is really balanced. Um, I'm just gonna jump over so you guys can see there is really nice shadows here on the lower part of the lens, um, some lines in here and so I'm gonna jump right into this. First off, really great impression. I, I really, um, Great balance, and one thing are jumping into how can we? So that is not necessary. It is possible? There's always room for improvement. We're looking at. Um, I'm gonna play around here. I'm not gonna track, but one of the things that I love is facing facing. So, kind of that around is take this here the color. That color. So what I just did is kind of move this. Around. Just moving these a little bit for the way so this these elements here is nice and even. The next thing as well, and like playing with all of the letter. So I feel like this is a great mobile line letter font that is playful but not like you gotta stick with the style as best as possible. Um, wide in here. This, then kind of combine. Staying more centered and maybe have that style. Um, and probably gonna repeat that all throughout the lettering. So the same thing, kind of keeping um because that style would work well here it can't go um the parts maybe this overlay a little bit more top of the y um just to fill out that space a little bit better and and sure that all depends on And so this is what I would do throughout the whole piece. And then make sure that these are just have a little bit more space. Parts here. Just okay. that. And what will happen is that the, 
at the whole piece will look all more evenly spaced um, and maybe same elements about here I'm not probably not the best illustration but even changing the size of the elements so helpful and bring it along maybe even not put the same elements next to each other great way to do the same thing and also maybe change the style of the U because if word doesn't you don't want to have it look like it's copied from um see that what she did here is really great she kind of switch around the style so you have the the script font here cursive um and serifs and then cursive again and here it's uh, pan serif cursive pan serif which is great but it looks too much similar and looks like an image where you feel i want to find the difference between those two just to make sure um, but I love that she used both illustrations. So yeah, all about these small details that could make this um, just a little bit more tidy, nice. And oh, I hearing that audio is very low. Let me that. change this here on the microphone. Perfect. Should be better. Let me know if if it's all best. I see people from India here. The nice to see you guys. Thank you so much for joining. Um, Daksha, great to hear your feedback. And again, here, the same thing. Just making a little bit more space to do these. If you have any questions about this piece, please ask them in the questions in the comments below. Leave a like uh, for the video. If you find this helpful, if you want to need, like if you need more tips about something specific, please ask um, how we can improve that because I really, like I need your feedback the same way I'm giving feedback to this piece. I need your feedback to make the Feedback Friday even better. So this is what I have to say on this piece here. Um, I love the 3D. I love how she um, did kind of the, the gradients of the 3D. If you haven't seen this, it's, it's a very great style, great way and effective way to do that. Um, to show you, it's really, she probably drew the outlines of the letters first. Then an easy way is to duplicate this, kind of move it down. Then erase the parts here. Then you can just connect these parts. And then make sure that you combine both of them and fill this out like that. Maybe there's a little part here missing that I missed. And then the next step is, well, you can fill in this part here. If you don't want to fill in then the same layer, so you kind of have more flexibility on the iPad, what you can do is actually tap on the layer and then select reference here and then go into the next layer and then fill this layer out. Um, what you might want to do is put that in the background, just a little bit smoother. I don't know if, if you saw this, um, if I put it back up, it's rough, it's really rough here on these edges. Um, if I put it one layer down, it gets a little bit softer, so that's a great way to kind of fill this out. So I still have a lot of flexibility to change the color here if I wanted to, if I make sure that it's in a locked layer. So for example, like this, I can also do a little gradient if I want it. Um, kind of like this. And there you go, you got, you have all the flexibility in this, uh, in this way. So that's a great way to do it. And what I really loved about what she did was um, to bring her drawing back is to actually Add like a little bit of gradient and a stylized gradient not just a normal gradient and what I mean by that is she didn't just do um, if I go back here wrong layer still there we go um, she didn't just do this like that would be kind of a normal gradient that so would kind of fade out which is also nice but she did a stylized gradient which is hard here like hard stop and then again another line so this is really Super easy way to, to do a gradient. Um, you make, need to make sure that you don't miss any parts here, maybe here as well. And then just add some, some lines 
that adds a great cool stylized gradient easy trick to do um, and that way you can do all of that so again if we look at these illustrations the whole style of the illustration work well with the letters uh, all stylized all great and that way really it's a great piece and Yuen Din, thank you so much for submitting your work to this Feedback Friday. Um, I hope you enjoy these feedbacks and I hope that you get to, to learn a little bit more. Maybe just improve those little things just to get it further. All right, next up we have Divertier Janssen. Um, he sent us this piece. It looks, it actually looks like it's drawn in real life, like it's an analog piece, it's on paper. Um, at the messy notebook is probably his handle on Instagram and so here we have someone amazing who did a long 3d piece and I really want to dive into it so first impression is you realize it's a 3d piece but the second impression I got is really I have a hard time reading it so it takes a long time to actually see what is the word and it's kind of funny because it's actually the word um, he wrote the word and so I kind of want to to show you first before we get into 3d we need to make sure that the piece the lettering piece in itself is is great um, is up to the standard is is nice and, and even so here we go I'm just gonna jump over to a brush I'm gonna uh, draw out maybe I can actually see I can try to do this there's a um, selection here automatic I'm gonna Go back well now I still have the reference on gotta take this one out jumping back here and um, let's see automatic there we go a little bit too much try this again a little too much there we go. So now you see, I only get this piece here. Perfect. I'm gonna duplicate that. And uh, let's see if we can just create a similar background so we get to see this without the 3D. Boom, there we go. So first up, just Word. And the reason why it's hard, I feel like, I feel out of my opinion, I feel why it's hard to, to read this um is because and i see that the messy notebook um that you do art jansen uh you just tuned in um thank you for tuning in i'm just gonna jump back here one of the reasons why i feel it's so hard to read is because the loop of the d there are so many loops and it's just harder to read um so kind of get rid of those loops first make sure that the r is really easy to read and not kind of like looks like a different letter so at this point right now it's 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 harder for me to to see the r so i'm just gonna take that a little bit down again kind of getting rid of the loops because we can play around with those loops later on um and that's that's one of the mistakes that i've made often is really the the amount of loops that i've tried to incorporate into my work i've tried to overcomplicate a piece of lettering so often that it's just gotten even more complicated over time. So right now, really what you wanna do, and and this is from a comparison from what I, how I would write it, um, put this back, I would probably go in and then even, let's see. Maybe even a little bit slanted, maybe not too much. So I'm just gonna try a couple of different attempts. A little bit slanted, so trying to keep these in those lines here. If, for example, the O and the R, not great combination, um, but you can play around with it. But right now it looks even more like a like a D, uh, like an N, I, I mean, like the D comes after. And then, and then, yeah, why not? Why not close this loop again, but still dangerous to play around too much. You can have this. So this is kind of often what I do with those loops. If I have space, 
and I play around with these loops and try to control where they go. And another way as well is to, if I go back and I change the R, the style of the R, um, one way to also play around is, is actually to go below and change here. But again, really stay safe. Um, it's easier to stay safe, especially when you go into 3D. Um, and I'm gonna show you why. So safe would be, I'm just gonna close the window real quick. Much better, less train noise. Um, I'm living, well, the studio here is right next to the train track. That's why some trains are going past really loudly, which is kind of exciting, but also exhausting. Uh, let's see if we can make up the music a little bit louder. Perfect. Okay, so in this case, I just want to keep it simple and, and keep it low. But here again, that's kind of what you can fix on your word is, is to keep these simple as well. And the next part, I'm going to add a new layer. Actually duplicate this. Hide the whole layer here. Let's see. Um, let's hide that a little bit. I just need to. Fix this. The thickness of the letters is also great because the longer your 3D will be, kind of the more weight it loses. And to show you this, um, I'm gonna bring the 3D back up here. I'm gonna make it a little bit smaller just so we have a reference as well. So as you can see, you can only see like long strips. And that's not necessarily what you want. So the thicker you make this here, the more weight you will give this, the more visible it will be. Got that like that. And now, um, Whoops, free hands like this. Um, duplicate. Like that. Again, duplicate. Well, I can actually duplicate both layers. I just want to create a 3D. So maybe not too much. Um, now we're gonna change the color. We're gonna add like this pink uh, to layer here, and then gonna take back the layer. So this is what you can fill out. Um, the length of the 3D, the 3D itself is, is done greatly, so that works. Um, but here is really how you can easily do that like this. And in your case, on this part, see this is one thing why it's a little bit harder if if your layers are so thin. It is actually that it looks it looks more like it will break easily, like it's fragile. If you look at the difference between the piece uh, at the top, the original piece, a little bit modified. Um, this one looks more like it could break at any time because it's fragile. And again, if we added the um, kind of the the gradients, kind of similar gradients as the other piece, we need to make sure that it's everywhere where the light hits from the top is hidden. So that would be all of this, all of here, all of there, all of here and a little bit over here like that then way here at the bottom here 
there are a couple of mistakes that he um, or she, I don't know, um, made here is is in the word here. There are some gradients that are missing, like the R here um, that misses a little bit. The the whole piece here would be filled as well. Besides, maybe not. Um, and so there are just like these couple of things that I would have corrected and done differently, as well as this piece here. Um, so if we look here, this would have been closed. Maybe here there would have been a little bit more. This would have been gone a little bit further up. That one would have been filled. And here that looks quite correct. The same way here, that pretty much would be totally closed off. Um, now that's the second part. The second part is really these pieces. So maybe inverting this one. So inverts um, here would kind of like change the style of the lettering. So it would pop out a lot more. So you can change the background to something a little bit um, like if I invert this darker then the word stands out a lot better but still the contrast in my piece it's thicker so it has a little bit more weight so it will come up a, a way better visually and in the other piece because it's so thin you just barely see it and that's where you can work a little bit harder and and change it plus make sure that it's not too complicated and um, just you can still add some elements afterwards like adding some uh, strokes fill in the wrong layer might have to jump up a little bit here like this like that you go like this could actually work and to compare this now of course a lot has to do with the style and he had um, some more illustrations there there you go that's that's uh, diff different versions that you can use so all right, that is just about this here. So this is for, we had Diwerte Janssen, and I'm gonna hide all these. Now we have Joanne Kwan from New York, um, as far as I know. If that's you, Joanne, I hope it's you. Um, but it looks like your work, so I'm definitely pretty sure it's your work. Um, so we have Your Promise Never Left My Side. I really love the chalk piece. So if you guys don't know, I just got a chalk wall on the side. I posted the last post on, on Instagram. It's um, you make today great. Um, I need a reminder of that all the time. Um, hey, Maria, what's up? Uh, nice to see you here as well. So we got Joanne's work here. And let's jump right into it, uh, taking a new layer just to show you what I like. Um, so first off, I love that he put his illustration into a box. So I'm just gonna highlight that box. Um, this triangle that is up here. And I really, really love what he did here that he, well, the illustration, this part here is absolutely amazing. Inserting this piece here, absolutely amazing. The word your and some clouds, the stippling, brilliant. Now there are two things I feel we could have done a lot better that uh, Joanne can improve on. And, and Joanne, if you're gonna watch this, um, this is my opinion of how I think you could have done better. And it's really taking these two words and posing them in here into files like a little bit separate like not just trying to fit them in and kind of not fit in um so promises is, is kind of trying to be fitted in but somehow like your shape that shape um here in the background this is like this um the triangle shape here really gives it the whole meaning the essence and that is just great now Again, I would have gone up and let's see if I can use the color that will stick out. Orange, yeah. Um, so just to try first, I kind of love the, the script, uh, cursive style, promise, and never. 
So either we'll go into never promise. And what I would love to try out, see, is can I move these around? Uh, where do they fit in well together? Kind of like this. And maybe see what happens if I fit them in here. If they that they would go out. And and this is kind of where I like where it's going. It's um let's see if I can easily uh, play over this. So first off is I need to make it a little bit darker. Probably gonna grab some dark here. And then just go over that. It looks like I'm erasing this piece and then grabbing some light piece here. All right, and now I can grab this white here, like this, perfect. And uh, let's see, take this back up one notch. Ooh. One higher, perfect. A layer, so. All right, fill this layer in with white, uh, fill layer, like that. Kind of like this, and and then just again a couple of iterations of these of this promise uh, never left my pro uh, left my side. Maybe we just want to keep this. change the style of the never the cool thing now is you can kind of tie it back in at the end and then you can kind of fill this out again with stippling so it stands out really nicely kind of like this and I kind of like this before here but again that's really your decision afterwards um, but that way this will stand out as much more like your promise feels like this is this is grace promise never is not necessarily the word combination I would choose as as the one that would stand out that should stand out um, so this is kind of the best way I see you could have improved this so Joanna hope this helps you um, again Play around with the sides, like doesn't have to fit that shape, but like, like try to break out sometimes. Like think outside of the box is, is the best uh, metaphor here uh, that you can use, and probably in the coolest possible way. And yeah, but I love how you play this. I love the illustration on the chalk piece. Joanne, you did a great job on this, and I'm really proud of you for this one. Next up, we got. Who do we have here? We have Andrea Stan. So Andrea Stan, similar to the first one we had um, here from Huyen Din. Um, also a 3D lettering piece. I love the illustration. Um, I think she did a great job with the weight. So kind of the, the things that we talked about before with the weight, she did a great job. It's a little bit heavy, like we talked about in the other one, like the lines are a little bit thinner, but the whole thing stands out. I can really read it fast. So trust yourself is quick read. We have a lot of um, ligatures and kind of things moving around here. The F is the probably the only letter here in this game that you have a hard time reading, but it still stands out. The colors are chosen in a way to complement each other. So a bright white is like the brightest point of the image is where you're gonna look first. So that's why choosing a bright color for the letter is, is a great way to get the attention. Then orange is the second lightest color in forms of contrast. And then dark green in the background kind of like lets it all pop very nicely. Um, for me, there's not much to say except for 
What about the rest of the image? Where can you place it? Can you play around a little bit more with it, maybe? Um, but I love it. Uh, I feel like the the shadows are great. The um, the lines, like it has its own style. The inline has definitely a, a nice flow to it. So that looks like it's all coming from one piece. So really, uh, Andrea San. I don't really have much to say except for maybe really the ornaments kind of like filling this out and, and a way to, to maybe do that is is by grabbing like bigger pieces like maybe like some some droplets that come out here and here. Um, again, because it's so bright right now, because I chose the the, the white, it stands out like it's it's so like it's the first point where you see uh, where your attention will go. Um, but you can also just play in the background, like, let's see, um, let's take this all back, take back those strokes, and see if I can um, separate it from the background. So we'll try this here, looks good. And then I'm gonna invert duplicate yes that looks great all right i'm just gonna choose the color i'm gonna drop that color actually fill layer perfect and uh so we have that background i'm gonna duplicate this here and what i'm gonna do is actually hide this into a darker green the layer and kind of play around now with the like not too harsh um, and then trying a Gaussian blur just blur this out a little bit something like this nope okay, something like that I'm just trying to figure out where the light comes from in this image. Um, that's kind of what is a little bit harder to do. But again, kind of adding like adding a world that comes out here, um, even I don't know, maybe like something like this in the background play around with it um, see where it takes you but put the whole background in the shape we'll add some more like stylized thing like you can maybe get a um, a military like camouflage background let's see if I can add a camouflage background if I can find something similar to that um, Probably that kind of looks cool. I like that. There's a lot of camouflage in here. Um, let's more of a pattern. Go back to the first image that we found on Unsplash. So this is a free side to use. Um, so you can just pop, drag, import, and I'm just gonna hide this layer, I'm gonna make small this whole piece here, if I multiply this, kind of like that, see you already gain a lot more thing with like uh, texture with pieces that you can do but again I love the color I love pretty much all about it so this is a great piece uh, Andrea great work keep it going definitely um, try out new things try to implement another like textures uh, grunginess um, backgrounds like stuff that you can make it hold up um, on its own without necessarily just having a flat background. That's my tip for you. All right, who's up next? We got two more to go. 
So here we have Muhammad no man, and I don't see the rest of the layer name, but Muhammad. Um, first, I saw this picture and I was like, it looks cool. It looks like there's a lot of stuff written. Uh, it looks nice because it looks like it's it's drawn with pen, and you all already get this feeling of like, ooh, where does it feel? I got the sense that it said Instagram right away, but the more I looked into it, I'm like, what does it actually say? So this is where the brush script is a little bit harder to, to read. Um, this is kind of where I, I felt it going. And so again, just really simplify things um, for yourself. Don't try to, to come up uh, too harshly. So in best way to show you now is I need to kind of change the, the lettering so it looks like it's actually flat and not uh, written down pretty much that way um now i can just hide a little bit here and again like space it's a lot nicer and change a brush i love the 3d style that one is definitely good it's great um that one is not easy necessarily to, to do I see. Um, here. Perfect. All right, we got. We got this. So, trying to keep more of, of a line here. So, there's a little bit thing missing. What it can do and how it can work actually is like a lot of brush lettering loves to have kind of this, this wave pattern. But that some parts of the letters will go further down. And it'll go up and then go down and then go up and down and so on um, but you really need to nail this this pattern style um, otherwise it just becomes hard to read and the closer your letters are squished together the harder it gets to read and for me here definitely letters that are hard to read and legibility is something that is super important to what I do um, to the work that I want to put out so the T is missing the crossbar here like it's it's added here but it doesn't make sense for me that it's all the way back the a here in the background is not closed off so I've, it could it could be a c and that's kind of the hard part like it would be a weird t but it could look like a c that's why i'm saying it um the g kind of works the r works perfectly the r is great um the m is it's kind of like a mountain going down. Could work as well. The I works because there are two bars, but it's a little bit thick. And then, yeah, the N. Kind of make sure that it comes out really nicely. And so, really what I recommend is going through it again, trying to put some tracing paper on top of it, or if you're using something digital, like you can create a new layer and then keep on, on trying to nail these. And, and for me, really, it's it's like crossing a line like a straight line and trying to get these as best as i can put them together here and then from there on you can play around a lot more because now you got a good foundation you got this good foundation like or a better foundation um but now you can add another layer here and then again start drawing on top and now you can kind of move the needle a little bit more um, to to add these I'm gonna go these down here and create some rules like I know rules are not fun but if you want to break rules then you got to have some that actually work in the first place and, and as you go, like try not to go too far away, um, not to, to steer off the path too far, too fast. Um, that is pretty much the best way to do so. And again, just make sure, boom, that works here. So just kind of to um, bring it back, play more with the font before you start doing the 3D. The 3D looks absolutely killer it works really well the picture the cover picture um, how you portrayed the whole thing excellent work 
Uh, I love like the pens, the shadows. It looks rough, it looks great. It's a great Instagram post. But again, it's hard to read Instagram for me. Um, so I hope you understand that and that makes sense to you too. All right, last but not least, Miriam Leonte. Um, he gives strength to the weary. Now, you see, I paused for just a little second because um, two was really hard to read. This is this is two in the background here, and the reason why two is so hard to read, I'm like I've I've gone through these mistakes myself, and and I've asked myself like why. Why do I need to show two? The reason is the, in, the most important part of the T is up here. This part here, you can cut the T at the bottom. Like the E here, this is hard to differentiate between a F and the E because it could be an F. This here looks like it's gonna be an S uh, because there are not many letters that stop here and that take this shape here. Uh, like just a bow because that will end. There's really not much many letters the t and the is a little bit more clear and that works pretty well and otherwise it's it's really nice so here for who do we said uh, miriam leonte make sure that if the word that you write here is is not affecting any letters um that are below it so that the two here could be still visible even if you added this style and the T here should also be visible so that is probably the first major um, difficult thing that I see that you should could fix easily um, especially as you go on just to make sure that you can read all the letters the easier make it to, for, for people to read, the better it will be. And another tip or trick you could also do is kind of actually, if it works, I need to move that in, um, is to put that up on top of it and kind of figure out like why not, why not have like different layers, like the, the lower part here, the D could be in the back, or I can play around with some different style letters. Um, that is kind of what I would suggest here. And as well here, don't overplay these loops. Um, it's it's kind of fun, but it's also not necessarily necessary. Um, a better way to play with those loops is really to to use the space and not just like play them out because you don't know exactly what to do with them. That's kind of what it looks to me like is that you lost um, you were out of idea of how can I actually implement these loops in and I wasn't sure how to do them so I kind of just like did them like that and yeah that probably works and so on and so it kind of like it's missing here the loop and so on this this is kind of what it feels like it's not not necessarily what you thought of uh, when you did it uh, and I hope that you can can learn from that really try to do things intentionally the best you can and learn from how to do them well and so the rest is you can play more with those letters. I like that the letter style in the background is easy, that the strength will pop out. I like that you use kind of like a handlebar. Um, again, there as well with the illustrations, try to come up with how can you add strength to the word strength, the style of the lettering strength. So it's also nice because strength, the word itself is written in cursive, which is kind of the, um, the, uh, the difference, the contrast of what strength is kind of like hard that's kind of how we imagine strength to be but if we think about it strength doesn't have to be like pull-ups like um like handlebars but it can be something soft like showing your soft side could be really showing strength and that's what i kind of want to do that with uh, the difference here so this is probably the best way that i could give you uh, feedback and if you are here perfect miri uh nice to have you in the the, the live stream I hope you learned a lot, but I love that piece. Uh, it looks great. Just some small things that you can improve on, and or even like if you have these words, like why not put them into kind of a nice ribbon? Um, because like right here, this is where the ribbon would probably fit in, like that. It doesn't really go on top of the words too much, 
that is what is great about it. And the only negative side of drawing the ribbon like this, I would probably either go the other way around is because the um, it looks like it's going down from this side, but up works usually best. Um, but that actually still works well. You could have done then maybe I don't like script or cursive in um, in ribbons. It doesn't fit well ribbons because ribbons should um, should be more fixed letters. But that's again go through different uh, options, different topics, and you can learn from that. All right, guys, that is it for Feedback Friday. I hope you've enjoyed these 40, uh, 45 minutes with me. Um, I had a lot of fun with you guys. I hope you learned so much from this. If you did, please leave a like, subscribe to the uh, YouTube channel for more. I won't be around next week for an, uh, episode three, but we're gonna do this later on. And I hope that I'll be doing some more um, draw with me, like come draw with me episodes next week in the morning as I'll have the studio to myself. Thank you again for watching. I appreciate it a lot. And I hope that you guys are going to have an amazing weekend. Be sure to check out the podcast if you haven't already. I also got a brand new book that is out called Master Your God's Masterpiece. And I'm sure you're going to love it. Uh, links are all in my socials on Instagram, on my website. You'll find that there. And again, if you need anything, please let me know. Send me an email, send me a DM, and we'll get back as soon as possible. And if you want your work, to be featured or to be reviewed by me uh, i would love to do that send me a email and do that um how globe trotty asks how we can get our work to you next time again there's an email link address in the description of this e uh, of this video and the same as the last video i'll announce it on my instagram as well so make sure to turn on no post notification on and um, we'll definitely let you know and you'll see that there on Instagram. Thank you guys so much. Have a great weekend. Talk to you soon.